up your good energy. How was your weekend? It was fine. It was fine? Mm. <laughs> fine. You remember that conversation we had a couple... Was it last week or week before, no? Uh, last it's week. fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you're watching this for the first time, you are live with us on Atom Bull TV. Yeah, yeah. This is the Back and Down Show with myself, Kimela Hillel, as your host, by my side, Brenna Hoover, my kind of Morning, morning, morning. A quick morning just brushed up on our TV side. Uh, it's pretty little issue out. Uh, good morning, honey. Good You're, morning. We just went live, but thanks for that. I love it. Don't wow. you like that? Well, yes. Don't you like that? Yes. Now, if you want to interact with us in studio today, like Pranil has, you can do so with the contact details that you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. And, uh, well, if you if, if you aren't already on Facebook, just comment at the bottom of the screen and just like, share, share and subscribe to this channel. <laughs> bo, 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 bo. <laughs> Happy Monday, everyone. Ah. So, this weekend, uh, chilling at home. Me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For once. For once. For once. Woo! Ah! Congratulations, Chloe. Yeah, yeah. I think we celebrate this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and you know when you going through movies like Netflix, you're going through all the, the cool movies, and I'm like, most of the movies I've come across, I was watching things like royalty things. Yeah. You know, like uh-huh. princess movies. Yes. So. I think I had a bit of a royalty weekend. Wow. <laughs> what would you do if you were queen or princess of, of a town or something? Woo. Would you milk it? Because you'll, you'll have people to wash your clothes, people to do this, people to even massage your feet, people to even bath you. Yeah. I, I think I would really like to take the opportunity. Would you like it or do you I, not I, like, I it? like it? I like it. I know I would like it for just a few Maybe two or three years will be bored. Yeah. Because you know you need your privacy and all that. You got yeah. nothing. Yeah. But you have to lead your town or country or whatever you're ruling to do. So it's not as easy as it sounds. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. So I, I wouldn't like someone bathing me though. <laughs> I'm being serious. As a queen or princess, I don't care how rich I am. I, I don't like people touching me. <laughs> Uh, no, on a serious note, guys, I can't handle somebody touching me. So, it's just if I don't know you. Oh, okay. I'm very weird. Like, mm-hmm. I know I'm loud, right? <laughs> but I'm very shy. <laughs> Poor bud. <laughs> but in our culture, yeah, yeah. If if you find a, a man who's deeply rooted into culture, okay, you need to bathe him. Really? Yeah. Did you bathe your husband? No. Then. <laughs> what are you saying? This one is she's <laughs> no, no. I, I I was like, if you find yes. a, a family or a man who's deeply into culture. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yeah. So mine wasn't. Alright, we got some love coming in on Facebook this morning. Uh, Dean Wilson! I can book TV's biggest fan! You do? Good morning, Kimela and Brenna. You guys are late, hey? Not late. <laughs> Not late. We just got you before, after 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, when I used to go to school, we'd be like, hey, you know you're late. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not late. The bell just rang before I got here. <laughs> I learned it from a movie. I watch too much TV. You see, yeah. that's why I yeah. don't stay at home. It gets you into trouble, though. So <laughs> All right, guys, if you are uh, watching this for the first time, today we decided to talk about royalty and Cleopatra the seventh. Ooh. Know about her? Mm. Interact with us today. today. I'd like to hear from you your thoughts and your facts, mm. according to you and Google. <laughs> uh, interact with us today. today. There's contact details right there. We'll talk about Cleopatra and everything that comes with it, what you know of her, her character, what you love about her, what people hated about her, and then just a woman that's a leader in her well, status. Yes. Uh, there's, there's good and bad in everything. You know this, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this, uh, but uh, let's take a bit of a commercial break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back if you are just joining us. You are live with us on Acid Bull TV. Yeah, yeah. This is the Crack of Dawn show with myself, Kimura Hiro, as your host by my side, Breda Hube, my candies. Yes, truly. <laughs> All right, so morning, everybody. I uh, guess we were a little bit late, Dean. Thanks for that. Uh, but uh, we had a bit of drop frames this morning. We had to check all our systems first before we can run and say to go. Yay! All right, so if you want to interact with us in studio today, you can do so with the contact details at the bottom right of your screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So uh, as before we cut to commercial, we were talking about... What are we talking about? Cleopatra. Coming at your majesty. <laughs> you know that song? Cleopatra. Coming at your... I don't know. Where did I hear that, guys? I don't know. I don't know if it's a TV show or if it's a song. That'll come to me. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about Cleopatra the seventh. Mm. And I'm sure you guys know of her by her beauty. Mm. People put it in movies. Yeah. But there's also different stories and truths to Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. Um, so guys, uh, Cleopatra the Seventh. For those of you who don't know, and kids, if you are watching, Cleopatra the Seventh ruled Egypt for 21 years. You said three years. Imagine being in that situation for 21, <laughs> 21. years. You had someone to wipe your bums, bath you, feed you, your dresses and your clothing is made made for you. Ah, uh, I'll get bored. <laughs> Within a week, I'll be like, this is nice and everything. Ah, I'm really, really. Everything's done for you. Mm -hmm. Everything. 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 No. Just done for you. No. Mm. Sorry, mm. I'm not that type of person. <laughs> a week. Maybe when I'm, you know, you're on vacation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't mind. Nah. But <laughs> more than a month, you'll die. Oof. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I, that's, I take pride in the way I like my clothes to be. Uh-huh. You know, okay, the way okay. I would like my nail to be. Okay. You know, someone can be good at something, but you know uh, the way you like it. The way you like it. Yeah, it's like, it's even my bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can get a domestic one. Mm -hmm. But I like it a specific way. And the I way want, you put it. Yeah, I don't want to stand and shout another human being yeah, and say, do this, do that. No, 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 no. it's the perfect. This is the I way I like it. it. Let me do it right better DIY, do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Dean Wilson coming up on Facebook uh, this morning. He says, what beauty are you ladies speaking about Cleopatra? She wasn't that good looking. Yeah, relax, <laughs> Dean, we're getting there, man. I'm just saying, this is how the world, or should I say, the arts portrayed her to be. Yes. And when you actually go and do a little bit of research, mm -hmm. which we did. Yes. Wow. That <laughs> nose. Yeah, the nose. <laughs> Did you see that coin and all of that? Yeah. Everything that her face was on. Yeah. The reality. The reality. The real Cleopatra. Who knows? So she wasn't really the queen, per se. Okay, she was the queen. <laughs> but the looks, I got a shock. I was actually shocked because the thought of Cleopatra in my mind mm -hmm. Even when you like grew an up. angel. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. yeah. and perfection at its best. Yes. You know? <laughs> Everything has its. You know, I'm gonna check this. We're also actually check. Okay, guys, we got a piece of, of, of a video for you to see about uh, what Cleopatra was about. A little bit of history. Mm -hmm. uh, you will enjoy. It. Don't worry. Stay tuned for that. It always comes at, uh, towards the end of the show. <laughs> but when I saw that, I was laughing because mm -hmm. I was like, she looks like my dad. <laughs> My dad has a bit of a hook nose, yeah. <laughs> so my dad could be Cleopatra. <laughs> Shout out to you, dad, if you are watching. Other oh, guys, okay, okay. Uh, All right, okay. so uh, for those of you who don't know, she lost her kingdom once. Mm -hmm. We were talking about women empowerment uh, during the uh, Women's Month. And this is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So she lost her, uh, her kingdom once. She regained it, right? Uh -huh. Nearly lost it again, uh -huh. okay? And then she amassed an empire. And then she lost it all. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about woman power, right? Anyway. Uh, okay, so, so uh, she, she's uh, a goddess as a child, and uh, she was queen at 18 years old. What do you and know about leading a country or a place? 18. 18. <laughs> what do you know? All you know is to get in trouble. Yeah. And you're inquisitive. But with those royalty, they, yeah. they are just bred. From, from baby. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get you. But still, <laughs> you don't have the mindset to lead. <laughs> no! You're a kid. I think you're a kid. Okay, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, but uh, I've never 
hung out with the royalty before. <laughs> so I don't know what the kids are actually like. <laughs> so what, what's your take on a kid ruling? Uh, well, if you've watched Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. Yes. If you've done something wrong. Yes. Okay. Then you will see that mm. if a child is being great for birth to lead, she can do it. Mm. Just like an adult. Yeah. I get you. Yes. Better watch it too much too. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on this, Dina? 18 year old ruling a country or place or town, whatever. Ruling, basically leading the people. And these are people who are actually elder with you. Yeah. And you, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. looking after this place. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I actually do agree with you. Mm -hmm. For what? I agree with you. <laughs> For what? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> no, but if, if you think of the mindset of kids nowadays, mm -hmm. it's like. Mm. You want that to rule them? No, 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 be careful. No, yes. Ah. You're like, uh uh. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I totally get where you're coming from. Royalty, when they are born, yes. from the from time they can understand and speak, yes. They are being, what's the word? Molded. Yeah. Yeah, they are being molded. molded. So we totally get what it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook. 18 year old is not really leading someone else behind the scenes, is pulling strings and advising. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks for that, Dean. See, you probably hung out with royalty. Yes. Okay, you know what? If we watch Game of Thrones and we watch yeah. TV, we'll actually learn that yes, there is an advisor behind it. Yes. Advising them, mm -hmm. shouting them, grounding <laughs> them. You're not allowed to do this. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. You will shame the family name. <laughs> That's not only royalty. <laughs> that sounds like my father. <laughs> you can't go in the street like that, you're a girl. Mm -hmm. like, I hope you're not going out like that. Ooh, my father. Mm -hmm. One day he's like, phew, 300 bucks for that skirt. Where's the rest of it? How <laughs> does that mean it's got like this? Basically he's saying it's a piece of cloth we're on my body. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Dear also coming here again on Facebook, uh, only person that had no one pulling strings behind the scenes was the Mad King from Game of Thrones. Ah, mm. you remember, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, right. So guys, do interact with us in studio today. We are talking about Cleopatra the seventh. Uh, but before we move on, um, uh, let's take a commercial break. Wanna be a star? For all your music needs, contact Rockstar B Productions South Africa. We offer music production, publishing, artist management, and digital distribution. For further information, contact 084 605 5466. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, you are live with us on Pool TV. Yeah. This is the Crack and Down Show with myself, Kimera Hidal, as your host, by my side of Brenna Hube, my candy sis. Truly. If you want to interact with us in the studio today, you can do so with the contact details, which you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. All right, with the director open the show today, you know what I want to, where the camera is right there and it zooms in with the opening shot. Unfortunately, due to uh, not having the right gear, <laughs> we are looking for sponsors who are willing to help us on yeah. Attenville TV. Mm -hmm. If you do want to interact with us and let us know, uh, if you are oh, sponsoring, uh, drop us an email on mail at attenvillefm.co.za. Now, guys, don't forget we are a non profit company and NPC, and we also have our PBO, Public Beneficial Organization. Now, remember, when you do fund us or when you do donate anything or even finances, you can claim your money back from SARS. Do interact with us. Uh, contact our management on uh, mail at attenvillefm.co.za. Uh, if you are, if you miss the contact details, you'll find it at the bottom right of your screen at all times during the show. All right. So talking about Cleopatra this morning, mm -hmm. you guys saw the advert, right? You did see it. I mean, Brad and I were on it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. We were preaching at her. Oh yes. I think maybe my father's prettier than her. <laughs> With his nose. I think the brother is sister. But her body, though. She has a nice body. You think they were, they were faking that too? No. You don't know if people fake that, right? No. Listen, real. did you not see each painting was different? It was. The, <clears throat> they they changed, were different. They, they were yeah. changing. Yeah, they're changing. And then those days, they never had wire bras, did they? <laughs> did they? <laughs> they didn't. They had. No, man, they didn't. Remember the corsets mm. inside? And, yeah. and, and those that made the, 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 the dress have more volume and everything. 
Yeah, that's what the corsets inside yeah. and the things that suck your body in. <laughs> so she might not be that hot. Mm. Cleopatra could be your size, baby. And the, and you know those corsets they pull yes, it tight, tight pulling... and make her skinny. Ooh. Beauty is pain, eh? It is. You see? Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook. In this day and age, politicians are regarded as royalty. Yo, I nearly had an outburst there. Okay. I'm just gonna say okay, that's fine. <laughs> that actually, my mother taught me if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. It's true. Okay. The same as maybe. Thanks, Dave. Okay, so guys, don't forget, don't go anywhere for those of you who just tuned in. You are a little late for the show, but uh, we talked about Cleopatra the Seventh as the advert, uh, well, promo yesterday. But uh, don't go anywhere. There is a nice piece of, uh, well, we, we put together a nice video for you to actually understand and have a bit of a history lesson for those of you who are watching kids. Uh, if, you, uh, if you don't know your history about Cleopatra the Seventh, stick around for it. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Royals, look what Dean is saying. <laughs> Okay, uh, Dean Wilson coming in again. Uh, that's why when the president or mayor walk in, everything stops and they get center of attraction. Really? I don't know if you, I'm not sure with your humor if you're being sarcastic or you're being serious. They're not, I wouldn't regard them as royalty. I regard them as. Oh, no. I just realized it made sense because they're leaders. Yeah. I get you. Mm. Oh, I got so much bad things to say. <laughs> oh, can I hold back on that one? Ah! What's your thoughts on, D on Dean Wilson's uh, uh, comments? He believes the presidents and the mayors that were. That's they true. Walk. Okay, so so yeah. they're, they're regarded as royalty. You know, everything stops. Yeah, yeah. Even in, on the road, if the president is passing, cars stop. The president is the only person who's allowed to be late. Mm -hmm. And we just wait for the address. Oh, yes. And then you get me sitting there. Does this man know I have to be up at 3 a.m.? Hmm? Hmm? Does he know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Getting back to our topic of conversation this morning, Dean Wilson behaved. <laughs> All right. So, um, for those of you who didn't know much about um, Cleopatra the Seventh, yes. Okay, so now we, we have agreed she was a goddess as a child. Yeah. Okay, we also agreed that she, uh, well, according to our facts and our research, she was a queen at 18 years old. Mm. Now, at the height of her power, she controlled virtually the entire eastern Mediterranean coast. Now, the last great kingdom of any Egyptian ruler, for a fleeting moment, she held the fate of Western world in her hands. Also, uh, according to my research that I put together yesterday, um, she had a child with a married man, three more with another. She died at the age of 39. Also, uh, catastrophe uh, well, reliably uh, cements a reputation and Cleopatra's end was sudden and sensational. In one of the busiest uh, afterlives in history, she has become an asteroid, a video game, a cigarette, a slot machine, a strip club, <laughs> uh, a synonym for Elizabeth Taylor. Shakespeare attested to Cleopatra's infinite variety. He had no idea. Everybody is too for you, baby. You know? mm. And it said that she was not Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but from Macedonian Greece. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I found that amazing when yeah. I saw that yesterday. Yeah. Like, she wasn't an Egyptian. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh -huh. uh, so she was a product of what they say, incense. Like, the incense. Incense. English will agree with English will have her. <laughs> you know, she's Shona, right? <laughs> Shana speaking. She is a Shana speaking lady. English humbled you. So they had to marry their siblings, like cousins, you know, just to keep the purity of the culture. Purity? In the yes. They call it purity. And her parents were brothers and sisters. So I can't picture myself with my cousins and my brothers and my sisters and my this and my dad. No. Imagine her parents married each other like brother and sister. Okay. You know she had to marry her two brothers. I get that. Mm -hmm. I hear you. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, the information that Brenna just delivered? But okay, as you're typing the message, uh, we'll come back straight after this commercial break.
Welcome, Welcome back! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know this is Attenville TV. You know you're watching the crack and die. You know I'm Kimena. This is Brenna. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, getting back to Cleopatra this morning. Uh, now, what were we discussing? <laughs> incest. <laughs> incest. I was like, yeah, marry your sibling. Okay, it's, it's, it's I'm kind sorry. Of weird. I cannot in a sense. You know, because now I'm in, I'm in this era. Yeah. This time. Yeah. Modern time. Yeah. Knowing that the same DNAs can cause. Your child to have disabilities, yes. you know, to be ill, yes. uh, mentally, mm-hmm. you know, different mm-hmm. types of things can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same DNA is yeah. That is why I get. But it's, it's not about you. it's not about the yuck person. Okay. It's about the DNA <laughs> mixing, and it does not go. It's not supposed to. At least you don't have a brother. I have. For me, picturing me it with my be. brother. It's disgusting. Oh, no. That's gross. Though. Even a cousin. Sis. No. How's Mm-mm. that thoughts in your mind? No. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, wait, we've got Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook. Uh, but before we mention his comment, guys, if you want to interact with us in studio today, uh, you'll find the contact details at the bottom right of your screen. <laughs> Alright, so Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook as he is the biggest fan of uh, Attenville TV. He says, here's a brain te- a teaser for you ladies uh, on a Monday morning. Does Egypt have a king in our current 2021? To my little knowledge, my answer would be no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the last time of ruling was 1955-ish. <laughs> I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Alright, uh, I'll stand corrected, yeah. but uh, thank you for that, Dean. <coughs> Brain keys this morning coming up from the public. I had to cough, sorry. Uh uh-uh, uh, post nasal drip, not COVID. Anyway, brain teaser. So, guys, you heard that one. Bra- uh, Dean Wilson has asked the public, and here's a brain teaser for us ladies. Now, I'm asking you, uh, does Egypt have a king in our current time in 2021? I answered no. Uh, yeah, I think it's independent now. It's ruling just like that. Mm-hmm. That's that. Last King, uh, Ahmed Fad Farah, correct, 1952. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Dean Wilson. <laughs> see, see, I just brushed my hair like that. I'm not as stupid. <laughs> you like Cleopatra? She was so intelligent. Yeah, she was intelligent. She was. She knew a dozen languages, and she was educated in mathematics, philosophy, anatomy, and astronomy. Very intelligent. Yes, she was. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what made her special. Yes. You get me? Yeah. But I try to say I'm angry. She said I'm like Cleopatra, guys. No. I don't have a father's nose. I got my mama's look. I got my mother's beauty and my Ooh. father's brain. Oh. That's what my yes. dad says. My dad says. Small but a big package. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you joining in just to see uh, what's up with Cleopatra's history. But before we get there, uh, Dean Wilson comes in on Facebook saying most of the countries have presidents except for the few that's under dictatorship, like England. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, Dean Wilson. All right, guys. Uh, for those of you just joined us, you're a little late, but check out all the history that you need to know about Cleopatra. Here we go. Cleopatra was born in 69 B.C., in the city of Alexandria, founded by Alexander the Great, situated in the Nile Delta. Cleopatra was an important queen of ancient Egypt, and her name continues to this day. She is one of the best known women in the history of mankind. Throughout her life, she stood as a strategist, determined, very intelligent, cunning, and owner of a gigantic fortune. Once, the Greek philosopher Plutarch wrote the following about her. The contact with her presence, if we lived with her, was irresistible. The Egyptian ruler fascinated many people in her time. To this day, she continues to enchant many. Her life trajectory is widely studied, researched, and debated. In order to understand her greatness, there are some interesting facts. In a temple dedicated to the goddess Venus, At the request of the Roman leader Julius Caesar, who was Cleopatra's lover, a golden statue of the Egyptian queen was built. There are records that this monument was seen and venerated at the site until at least the 2nd century AD. Curiously, Cleopatra was even venerated as a true goddess, more precisely as a new goddess Isis, 
one of the most important deities of ancient Egypt. She was also identified as Aphrodite, Greek goddess whose attributes are similar to those of Isis. Cleopatra also had refined intelligence. She received a remarkable education. Together with the other children of royalty, she was educated in the palace where she lived. Cleopatra was able to speak seven or eight languages, which greatly facilitated her agreements and political stratagems. She was reportedly the first person in her family to speak the Egyptian language without interpreters. In addition, she succeeded in studying philosophy and rhetoric. From an early age, she learned oratory, which she knew how to use in a very intelligent way, speaking with the correct posture, appropriate gestures, and a soft voice. With regard to her vast knowledge, it should be remembered that Cleopatra lived in Alexandria, a cultural center in antiquity with the famous Library of Alexandria, full of many literary works in an unprecedented structure. These local circumstances were very important and influential in the cultural formation of the Egyptian ruler. Her achievements made her the lover of two of the most famous Roman generals of her time, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. As is often the case with historical figures, much information about the life of this remarkable woman has been distorted over time. Today, we can find the image of Cleopatra stamped on the most varied objects and her name is known by many people, although not by everyone what she was like in reality. In fact, these physical representations of the figure of the queen usually consist of one of the many distorted points in her story. Regarding the queen's look, Plutarch wrote the following words, she wasn't so unique that there were no comparison, or that we couldn't look at her without being touched. We can also get an idea of how she was physically through various coins that were created and circulated at the time when Cleopatra lived. These objects are the most reliable sources for us to imagine what she looked like. There are also some busts sculpted over time that apparently represent the queen. When we see the coins, we notice the protrusion of the nose and chin. In fact, the philosopher Pascal wrote, If Cleopatra's nose had been smaller, the whole face of the world would have been different. Taking into account this comic phrase and noticing the features that the powerful Egyptian woman has in the coins, we can conclude that perhaps she was not as extraordinarily beautiful as the cinema showed us. But one thing is certain, her conquests and way of being surpass any Hollywood representation. Let's see now why. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was in power for three long centuries. Their rule was marked by many marriages and murders among the family members. This imposing dynasty was born after the death of the mighty Alexander the Great, King of Macedonia. With his death, his empire was divided among his generals. An ancestor of Cleopatra, Ptolemy I Soter, was among them, who initiated the Ptolemaean dynasty after starting to rule the magnificent city of Alexandria, an unparalleled cultural center of ancient Egypt. In view of this genealogical tree, it is important to remember that the powerful Cleopatra referred to in this video is Cleopatra VII. Six other Cleopatra preceded her in her family lineage. In Alexandria, the queen lived in a luxurious palace, full of wealthiness and beautiful ornaments. The palace was huge and spacious, with more than 100 rooms and a stunning external landscape. There were breathtaking gardens, decorated with beautiful statues and fountains. This fantastic palace was constantly enlarged with successive generations of Ptolemyan figures. The site became the most luxurious palace in the Mediterranean. Cleopatra, daughter of Ptolemy XII, grew up in this reality. She had two sisters. Berenice IV and Arsone IV, and two brothers, Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV. When her mother died, Berenice IV settled in power, but her period as ruler was short and the young woman was killed by her own father. It is important to underline again that the lineage of the Ptolemies had as one of its main characteristics the murders. Later, Arsone IV was exiled by Julius Caesar and later executed by Mark Antony at the behest of his own sister Cleopatra. 
the fate of Ptolemy XIV was no different. Cleopatra began to rule Egypt at the age of 17, after the death of her father. According to tradition, she married his brother Ptolemy XIII, who, at the time, was only 13 years old. Sometime after Cleopatra became the queen of Egypt, her brother and husband, Ptolemy XIII, began to take an interest in ruling the country without the intervention of his sister. Pothinus, Achilles, and Theodotus Achaeus, three important advisors to the young king, agreed with this idea to persuade the young man to break with Cleopatra and remove her from power. The queen, during her government, wanted to maintain political ties with Italy in a showcase of her strategic skills. Her goal was to strengthen friendship with the Romans, who could be important allies in the event of a civil war in Egypt. Her main ally would be General Pompey, leader of one of the most traditional Roman families. These diplomatic maneuvers led to Cleopatra being accused of treason for deceiving her brother. At the age of 21, the young ruler was forced to leave Alexandria and went into exile in Syria, where she assembled an army. The young Egyptian king and his three advisors decided to go in search of the queen to prevent her return to Alexandria at all costs. However, during their search, they learned of the unexpected news. Pompey, who rivaled the great Julius Caesar, was on his way to Egyptian lands. He thought he would be welcomed by the pharaoh himself, since he had been a great friend of his father. Pompey the Great was a very skilled general. Throughout his life, he conquered countless nations in Africa, Asia, and Europe. After suffering a defeat in Greece, the fearful Pompey fled to Egypt in search of refuge after a disastrous defeat in Greece against his enemy Julius Caesar. A conflict divided the Roman Empire between Pompey and Julius Caesar. This conflict became known as Caesar's Civil War. Upon learning that Pompey intended to disembark in the country, the Egyptian partisans reflected. Helping the old acquaintance Pompey was a risk because it could be interpreted as a declaration of war on Julius Caesar, who commanded a very powerful war machine. Moreover, Ptolemy and his allies believed that Pompey could go help Cleopatra regain her place in royalty and trouble had to be avoided. But Pompey had been a great friend of the father of the couple who ruled Egypt, therefore if they did not help him, he could break ties with the country, making Egypt an enemy of Rome. Theodotus and the two other counselors, Achilles and Pothinus, reflected on the matter. It was a difficult decision, and the consequences could be risky. But eventually, as the three counselors struggled to find a solution, Theodotus, with a smile, looked at his companions and said, The dead do not bite. The choice had been made, to break up with Pompey, and establish an alliance with Julius Caesar. As Pompey approached Alexandria, he felt he would be welcomed by the Egyptians, but there was already a trap set up against the Roman, pretending that they would welcome him amicably. But as soon as Pompey arrived on Egyptian soil, he was brutally beheaded. A few days later, Julius Caesar arrived in Alexandria to seek out his adversary, the Egyptians showed him Pompey's head, and Caesar was shocked by the violence. Despite being his enemy, Caesar respected Pompey. On Caesar's orders, Ptolemy's advisor was executed. Caesar, with his army, went to the royal palace, where he settled and informed himself that he would like to see the king and the queen. It is important to remember that Ptolemy XVIII was prepared to face his sister's army. When he was informed of Julius Caesar's arrival, he headed for his palace. And Cleopatra? How could she return if she had abandoned Alexandria and if her brother and faithful guardians wanted her away from the city? She was in danger and she knew that she could not be seen. Then the queen had a rather unusual idea. In order to meet Julius Caesar, she created a plan and, to put it into practice, had the help of a Sicilian supplier named Apollodorus. They entered a boat where the queen was hidden, sailing the Nile River for eight days. When they approached Alexandria, Cleopatra, still with the help of Apollodorus, entered a papyrus made sack. The queen's accomplice tied the big sack with a leather rope 
and carefully entered the palace, leaving the sack in Julius Caesar's room. We don't know exactly what the Roman's reaction was when he found Cleopatra, but the Egyptian woman conquered him immediately. With Caesar by his side, everything would be easier. The opportunity to get rid of his brother and rule according to his interests was finally within her reach. With Pompey's assassination, Julius Caesar had a very negative opinion of Ptolemy. Cleopatra used the death of his former ally to her advantage. The queen convinced Caesar that she was the right person for the throne of Egypt. The queen of Egypt and Julius Caesar entered a loving relationship. Caesar's decision to support Cleopatra angered Ptolemy, who declared war on Julius Caesar. The Roman general was at a numerical disadvantage and took a defensive position. This event became known as the Siege of Alexandria. Caesar and his men fought hard to defend their position, waiting for reinforcements. When his allies arrived, Caesar defeated Ptolemy's army at the Battle of the Nile. The young pharaoh drowned in the river. With Julius Caesar, the queen had a son named Ptolemy Caesar, historically and popularly known as Caesarian. Caesar's support was crucial to the consolidation of Cleopatra's power in Egypt. The Roman general returned to Rome, and Cleopatra reigned over Egypt. Everything seemed to go according to plan, but a huge turnaround would eventually happen. Cleopatra had consolidated her power on the throne of Egypt, and under her administration, Egypt prospered and the city of Alexandria experienced a cultural boom financed by the queen. Cleopatra organized an expedition to Rome. In the city, she stayed at Julius Caesar's mansion. The Egyptian queen took her son Caesarion in the voyage, the fruit of her union with the Roman general. Julius Caesar was at the height of his power and, as the leader of his nation, made several political and social reforms. He also organized the triumph in his own honor. The parade of Caesar had the presence of Arisene, Cleopatra's sister, displayed as a prisoner, symbol of Rome's victory over the Egyptians. Caesar introduced the city to the Egyptian queen, but at the time, Rome did not yet have the glory that brought it into history. It was not yet comparable to Alexandria, the capital of Ptolemaic Egypt. Caesar's relationship with the foreigner was frowned upon by the Roman elite. There were a lot of rumors and lies about the couple. Caesar was named dictator in perpetuity and had an unrivaled power. The Roman senators were left without much of their influence and feared losing their remaining power. So they conspired against Caesar's life. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar was murdered by Roman politicians in a Senate session. Chaos engulfed Rome. General Mark Antony, Caesar's right-hand man, pursued the conspirators. In a public square, he read Caesar's will where his son with Cleopatra was not among the heirs. In his will, Caesar indicated his nephew Octavius as his successor. Rome was no longer a safe place for the Egyptian queen and she returned to her kingdom. Meanwhile, Octavius and Mark Antony led their armies in the persecution of the men who betrayed Caesar. There was a remarkable encounter between Cleopatra and Mark Antony. In the year 41, he sent a messenger to Alexandria. Through this man, he called the queen for a meeting in Tarsus, a city located in present-day Turkey. The Egyptian queen arrived at the agreed place in a dazzling boat. The ship had a stern made of gold, its oars were made of silver, and the sails were purple. The navigation was accompanied by music. Fife, lyre, and flute were played. The queen, beautiful and ornated, was freshened up by her servants and the boat had a wonderful smell. The entire population left their duties to follow Cleopatra's triumphal arrival. Mark Antony fell in love with her immediately. Still, in 41 BC, Cleopatra invited the mighty Mark Antony to visit Alexandria. 
However, after spending some time in the Egyptian city and getting involved with the queen, the Roman left and the two continued to exchange correspondence. The couple only met again after a long time, but before that reunion, something happened. In 40 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to twins, recognized by Mark Antony himself as their heirs. The children were called Helios, a Greek origin, which means sun, and Selena, which means moon. During the absence of the Roman, where he was separated from the Egyptian queen, he even resumed his relationship with his wife Fulvia in Rome, although he could not forget Cleopatra. Fulvia eventually died, which may have made things easier and made it possible for Mark Antony to finally join Cleopatra once again. But Octavius, Julius Caesar's nephew, did not want that to happen. He suggested that his sister, Octavia, should marry the Roman general. That happened, and they had three kids in two years. Mark Antony, after Caesar's death, became consul general. Later, his power was divided between him, Octavius, and Lepidus, a political association known as the Second Triumvirate. Lepidus distanced himself from political life, which led to a dispute between Octavius and Mark Antony. The power in Rome was divided between the two. Caesar's nephew ruled the west, while Mark Antony managed the eastern provinces. Although he was married, and even against Octavius' will, the romance between Mark Antony and Cleopatra was not over. They met again in the city of Antioch, where they made their union official. The romance between the two was thriving, and they both seemed in love in Alexandria. The couple had many parties and banquets where they displayed their sovereignty. However, the Roman was forced to leave Egypt after an attack by the Parthians in Syria and Asia Minor, the inhabitants of the Parthian Empire in ancient Persia. Octavius reproved this union and was frustrated by the relationship between the Roman and the mighty Egyptian. In part, this was due to his sister Octavia, who ended up rejected by Mark Antony, and also for fear of losing part of the Roman Empire to the couple. A new civil war broke out in Rome between the supporters of Mark Antony and the defenders of Octavius. The Battle of Actium happened in 31 BC in a region in Greece where both faced each other. Cleopatra accompanied her husband as he headed towards the long battle. But when the defeat of Mark Antony was already visible, she returned to Egypt, quietly announcing a false triumph. Octavius achieved a decisive victory in the naval battle of Actium, and this victory marked the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the imperial period. However, his opponents eventually discovered the truth while Cleopatra tried to maintain her position and conquer allies. She did everything she could so that together with Mark Antony, they could rise again. But he, after defeat, was no longer the same person. Octavius said he would forgive Cleopatra if she killed her lover. Ignoring the proposal, the Egyptian queen continued to try to motivate her husband while she tried to discover, together with her personal physician, a painless poison. The queen was preparing for the worst. The end of Mark Antony was tragic. While Cleopatra tried to flee from Octavius and his army, who had already arrived in Alexandria, the Roman soldier received the news that his lover had died. Desperate, he took his sword and wounded his own chest. However, the strike was not accurate and Mark Antony did not die immediately. While he was bleeding and suffering from the pain caused by the blow, he was informed that Cleopatra was still alive and managed to find the Egyptian monarch. His last breath happened in the arms of his lover. When he reached his other half, Mark Antony had already lost a lot of blood and there was nothing that could save his life. Before dying, however, in the arms of his beloved Cleopatra, he asked her to collaborate with his opponent Octavius in order to save herself. After this request, the great Roman Mark Antony died. Caesarian, Caesar's heir some time later, was also killed by Octavian. At that time, at funerals, it was common for women to hurt themselves with punches and scratches, accompanied by cries of pain and despair. 
That's what Cleopatra did in front of his late lover. Her injuries caused an infection, and she received treatment on the orders of Octavius. However, the queen, shaken by the death of her beloved Mark Antony and afraid of the future, tried to resist the treatment so that she could die. But Octavius terrorized her with threats to her children. Cleopatra gave in and, out of love for the heirs, accepted the proper treatment until she recovered her health. Cleopatra also had an impactful end. It was one of the events that eternalized her in history. The queen failed to escape her rival Octavius, who had arrested her in Alexandria, but she resisted and would not surrender to the enemy, going through the humiliation of being a prisoner and hostage of Rome. That would be too embarrassing for a woman like her. As for her sons, Caesarion was murdered, as was said, and the others were taken to Rome to be raised by Octavia. Cleopatra was constantly watched over by order of Octavius, since she had attempted suicide twice, after the death of Mark Antony. But Octavius's plans didn't go as expected. The queen, always cunning, put an end to her own life. Before that, she sent a letter to Octavius in which she asked to be buried next to her late husband. In relation to her death, some sources say that she was voluntarily bitten by a serpent and died from the poison. Other sources and scholars affirm that Cleopatra took some poison. With these uncertainties, her end is quite controversial. Some sources say Cleopatra's personal physician had a great deal of knowledge about poisons. Besides, the queen was always a strategic and effective person. Most likely, she prepared her death in advance. Finally, even though the most famous version is the one that states that Cleopatra died while being deliberately bitten by a serpent, it's more likely she ingested some lethal poison, which did not cause major discomfort at the time of her death. She was found on top of a couch, dressed in beautiful garments. People claim that she had a serene expression. She died nine days after the death of her lover. Her funeral was solemn and elegant, worthy of an Egyptian queen. Her request to be buried next to Mark Antony was respected. After the death of the powerful monarch, Egypt became a Roman province. It was the end of the hegemony of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt. Cleopatra's story is fascinating. Many of her female ancestors were important Egyptian rulers along with their husbands. Curiously, Egyptian women at that time had more freedom than women from other civilizations. Cleopatra did not play a secondary role in this lineage of women rulers and was a renowned figure. Her life journey was particularly hectic and impressive in many ways. Firstly, the Ptolemaic lineage, which is impressive due to the number of murders among the family members themselves. This habit, indeed, was inherited by Cleopatra. But regardless of these murders, the Ptolemaic government was very important to Egypt and Cleopatra had major responsibilities and had to make important decisions throughout her life as ruler of Egypt. She had admirers and rivals. She was skillful, proactive, and extremely influential. She was a rare, special, quite determined woman. She always had strategies to achieve all her goals. Cleopatra marveled everyone because of her great knowledge and also because of her differentiated intelligence. The profile of the Egyptian queen, with all these qualities, allow her to conquer two of the most legendary characters in our history, the powerful Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. And, as time went by, Cleopatra's figure was often misrepresented, and the Egyptian woman was seen with prejudice. At times, it seems that her entire life path and conquest boil down to having seduced these two Romans. But this view of the queen's life is simplistic since she has had great political achievements. In any case, the legendary Egyptian queen has become a source of inspiration for some of the greatest artists in history. Among them, the painter Michelangelo, William Shakespeare. In their hands, the ruler became an illustrious piece of art. As we learn more about her story, we realize it's not by chance that Cleopatra has fascinated so many people in her time.
and continues to captivate so many others in this day and age. for interacting with us uh, this morning. I'd like to give a shout out to Bongani Nkosi. He says, I'm late for the show. Good morning, Good cool Monday. Morning, Bongani. Hence, I got a jacket on. I never, ever wear a jacket. <laughs> I know. Ever. <laughs> you never did. I was fast. <laughs> yeah, we've got royalty in the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dean Wilson comes in and he, he has given us a bit of uh, history as well. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the snippet we put together for you. Uh, we've got Dean Wilson saying, Did you guys know that uh, Cleopatra's tomb will never be found? I mean, over the past two million, uh, millenniums, um, he says, coastal erosion has meant that parts of Alexandria, uh, including a section that holds Cleopatra's palace, are now underwater. Oof. Now, you know when God does something like that, it makes you think. <laughs> you defied him. Or you're not living naturally, I suppose. <laughs> Why else would something go underwater? Come on, brother. We love you. Do you think we're misbehaving that God put the coronavirus here? <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, being African and me telling you the next few words, tell me what you feel, right? Okay, so people are making the booties. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's not natural. Okay. It's us creating and going against whatever God's will was. Yes. Yeah. Don't you think he's getting upset now? Yeah, he is. Everybody's going against nature. Man. Yes, it's crazy. Everyone. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, so the longer this coronavirus stays, the, the, then you must just know, ah, we need to it's fix us. us. Yeah, we need it's to fix true. us. So stop it, whatever it's you're true, doing. though. I know you're looking at me. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got Dean Wilson coming in. So, Kimera and Brenna, when are you guys going to Kempton Park Hospital to broadcast live? Okay, for those of you who uh, uh, want to know what Dean Wilson is talking about, we are live on the on, on Facebook. Uh, we do showcase a ghost story every week. Uh, we've got Charmaine Russ who gives us her, her team uh, and they shoot uh, whatever they, they, well, whichever premises they decide to investigate. They send us their footage and we do a live broadcast about Charmaine Russ's team and ghosts and the story that's happening on the premises. Yeah. Uh, Dean Wilson, we don't know yet, but uh, I'll send Brenna. Nah. I'll just be <laughs> production. You bring the footage. <laughs> you must come to me. Why say the others? Got it, dude. Uh, yeah, we go together. She wants you to go with her. Yes. It's cool. With, with us. You guys. No, no, no. Uh -uh. You two are going to go capture everything about the ghosts. <laughs> and plurals. Yes. Ghosts. Mm. You guys gonna capture the footage? You gonna bring it back to me? I'll, I would, by all means, I'll spend hours upon hours in my safe home, non haunted home, and edit for you. But I'd like the adrenaline and. Yeah! yeah if anything. <laughs> You go, girl. Yeah. You I, I want to go. I want to go. Enjoy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll phone you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dean Wilson, uh, no, you must do it live. No. No. You why must say, why would you want to do that live? Okay. Including him. Yeah, Dean Wilson. Uh, Brenna Muve Makati. Yes. He's telling you. Yeah. Live, you will join her. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, you can hand it back to me. Yeah, we <laughs> hand it back to <laughs> Tim in the studio. <laughs> I keep it gangster. Ah! All right, all right. Uh, Dean Wilson says he's not afraid of ghosts. Mm. I, I can believe that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brenna, first, you need to go to Moore's Castle. That's what Dean says. Why Brenna first? Why? Because you, I don't know, maybe you're picking on it. He just says, 
There's it. First, we're gonna live on, on the second answer. I'll go. You'll go? Mm, provide the something for me. I told you I'll phone you. Like, money. Yeah. So we can. But if you die, right? Check this out. Okay. Not me. <laughs> I'm just saying. If something happens to you, you don't get paid. <laughs> How are you gonna get paid? You're dead. It's gonna transact into your bank account. I'll be a ghost. So I'll make sure you everything. can't spend the money, dude. Yeah. Okay, first you have to make some. Be clever. Be clever. Be clever. Okay. Be clever. This is what you tell me. Uh, okay. To to secure your booking, mm-hmm. you need to pay seventy percent. Yes. Of the full price. Six. Yeah, I'm That's, That's why you're like, here. That's why you're here to help me out. <laughs> Indeed, you heard it. So All right, guys, do it. But jokes aside, as you know, we are a non-profit company. So if you do want to donate or finance us in any way, it doesn't have to only be money. If you want to uh, also donate canned foods, as you know, we give back to the community and we're here to uplift the community. We are Attenville TV and FM station right here. And we're in Attenville. So if you want to uh, uh, join us or do your God's work through us in my culture, we call it your seva, please do drop us an email on mail at attendlifm.co.za. You'll see it at the bottom right of your screen right throughout the show. All right, uh, Dean Wilson uh, coming in uh, and as well, <laughs> he says everything is in life isn't about money. Brenna. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, I, I saved it. What's your problem? Okay. <coughs> Bongani coming in. Uh, Dean, tell them to go and check out the old story, Tembisa 10. They in Kempton Park Hospital. What really happened there? Bongani, honey, you're going to go there. Mm-hmm. Brenna's going to help you. Yes. I'm going to cap. I'm going to edit when you're done. Dean will be leading. But just do me a favor. Can you hook up your camera to a cloud? <laughs> just now you you get killed or hurt and then or and the camera's damaged. Yeah. I needed to capture somewhere so I can for you to come back. Why would I come back? No, I mean like oh. if we go there, maybe we might not come back. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hook your camera up to a cloud so I can get the footage of you your last words are and I'll tell I'll tell your family that was your, that, that was your last words. Ah! <laughs> I'll say that at the funeral. That's my speech. Brenna's last words were. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all the time we have for, for today, folks. Dean Wilson will we'll chat to you in private in a bit. But do join us on the Breakfast Express Show. Brenna Hoover, Mackenzie, and myself, Kimera Hirolo, also known as DJ Brennan. Yes, DJ Baby Girl, live on Attenville FM. Uh, we'll be there in a couple of minutes, all the way up until 9 a.m. to keep you company. This happens every single weekday, Monday through to Friday. From myself, Kimera Hirolo, and Brenna Hoover, Mackenzie, bye bye. <laughs>